welcome to Pennsylvania in Focus. I'm Kristen Smith, Pennsylvania News Editor for the Center Square. Joining me today is the Center Square's Pennsylvania reporter, Anthony Hennon. You covered the first of two big Senate hearings in the coming weeks about the train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. As uh, many of our listeners may realize that this is just miles over the border into Pennsylvania. So why don't you tell me a little bit about what you heard on the, the committee hearing so far? I mean, generally, there's just there's a lot of anger here. There's a lot of frustration. Um, and there's just a lot of anxiety and fear. Essentially, the first half of um, this hearing hosted by the Senate Veterans and Emergency Affairs Hearing Committee, this was basically just local residents, uh, mostly in Pennsylvania, but also a resident or two of East Palestine itself, just talking about what life has been like for a couple of weeks. You know, they're, they're mentioning the health effects, obviously, where anything from sore throats, um, uh, skin rashes, headaches, to um, uh, bronchitis, eye irritation when they're outside, a chemical smell in the air. You know, there's a lot of these things that we've, we've been hearing. Um, we're also hearing things from, um, you know, doctors not quite sure what they're supposed to be testing exactly because they don't necessarily know what's in the air, what people are experiencing. But a lot of this is just from a lot of these residents, you're hearing this, this feeling that they're simply forgotten where they understand, you know, this is happening in Ohio, but it's also it's spreading over into the Pennsylvania state border. Um, you know, they're talking about how they matter too. Uh, they have loved ones they're afraid for, and they're afraid for their lives either in the short term because they're not necessarily hearing much from state and local officials, but also the long term because they, they want to hear from officials how they're going to keep up on the situation. They want to get assurances that they're going to get monthly testing of, you know, well water, of air quality, but also similar things for the next, you know, three to five years, if not 10 years to make sure that they're not missing anything. Because in the short term, you know, you're, you can see when you're getting a rash on your skin. You can feel when you're getting a sore throat. But years down the line, you know, if we're getting cancer clusters or anything more serious, that sort of thing takes time to develop. You know, you're you're hearing that um, one resident in Slippery Rock Township um, said that she felt abandoned and that they're on their own. They're wondering about the oversight for this testing. They're wondering if they can even trust the EPA, state officials. Um, they have essentially no faith, unsurprisingly, in Norfolk Southern itself to actually, um, you know, do the re- remediation for these environmental impacts and the health effects. One resident said that, uh, you know, they Norfolk Southern cared more about moving the trains down the tracks than they did about the residents uh, residents living around it. One man who lived nearby uh, said that the overall lack of support from our elected officials has been nothing short of pathetic. Talking about this from you know state representatives from the area, Governor Shapiro and his administration. Um, there's just a lot of frustration here. And simply, there's not much trust. A lot of these people just feel like they're already used to being ignored or not really paid attention to in that part of the state. And so they it's it's very much they're not going to believe much until they actually see some action on the ground. Referring to back to Norfolk Southern, uh, as these residents mentioned, they feel like they're forgotten in our reporting in Pennsylvania. Of course, we've paid close attention to how this has unfolded in Ohio as well. And, you know, it's curious to note that Norfolk Southern, although invited, did not show up to this hearing, did they? Yes, that's correct. Um, yeah, there is CEO, the uh, uh, Senate committee reached out and requested his appearance. I, I believe uh, in the letter they got back from Norfolk Southern, it was something along the lines of, you know, there's a, there's another sort of investigation going on. So it would be inappropriate for us to come out, you know, speak about these issues. Senator Doug Mastriano, who re- who was the Republican nominee for governor, but who chairs the uh, Senate uh, Veterans Affairs Committee, uh, committee. He mentioned that they're looking into holding a vote for Subpoena to uh, bring him out. So the CEO would have to you know, appear and testify. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, Mastriano as well, the Democrats on the committee, um, Democrat uh, Katie Muth also talked about how the harm that they've seen is devastating and that, you know, there is something that the committee needs to do and really focus on improving things. So there seems to be a strong, you know, bipartisan support for taking more action, getting Pennsylvania more involved in monitoring what's happening in the western part of the state here. It's good that you mentioned bipartisanship for listeners who may not know. Senator Mastriano and Senator Muth, they may be the two most ideologically opposed 
senators in the chamber. So the fact that they are coming together on this and agreeing shows you the magnitude of frustration and quite frankly, distrust, as you mentioned, in Pennsylvania. The idea that Norfolk Southern couldn't or wouldn't show up on this um, in Pennsylvania to discuss this shouldn't come as a surprise. They also did not come to a town hall meeting in Pittsburgh a couple weeks ago. Of note, though, however, the CEO was in East Palestine this week for a town for another town hall and to apologize directly to the residents as as they should. So it continues the narrative that the railroad is proclaiming responsibility and pledging responsibility to just Ohio, even though this is recognizably a disaster on both sides of the border. Yes. Um, even one resident who is testifying said that in communicating with Norfolk Southern, one of the officials did not actually believe there's an evacuation order for anyone in Pennsylvania until that resident showed a police report to him. So I think there's simply, you know, there's enough distrust among Ohioans affected by this. But I think it's even amplified more in Pennsylvania simply because even if they're saying the right rhetoric, very few people are really believing any of this until you, know, you actually see the action following up here. It's it's going to be a high bar, I think, for Norfolk Southern, especially, but also just state officials and local officials showing that they care until there's actually action happening, until they actually have details on, you know, are they going to get air and water quality testing for free? Are they going to get water, you know, supplied to them? Are they going to have any sort of, you know, interest free loans to try to recover from this and anything like that until we, they actually get the details until it's actually in their hands are happening, there's going to be much more skepticism and um, cynicism about any rhetoric that we hear coming. I appreciate you updating us on this ever-developing story. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. For Anthony Hennon, this is Kristen Smith. Please subscribe and thanks for listening.